In this video, we're going to see how to deploy a Spring Boot and Angular application to Heroku Cloud Platform. We're going to deploy both these apps individually, and I'm going to take the Reddit clone application we have built in the previous tutorials as an example. As always, if you want to access the source code along with the written version of this tutorial, make sure to check out the links in the description section. So without any further delay, let's start the video. So I'm going to divide this video into different sections. So first of all, we'll start off by preparing our Spring Boot application for production usage. In this section, we are going to mainly concentrate on using a Postgres SQL database for production environment alongside the MySQL database for local development. And we are also going to replace some hard-coded localhost URLs in our Spring Boot application with environment variables. After making these changes, I'm going to show you how to deploy this application to Heroku Cloud Platform. As part of the section, we're going to install Heroku CLI in our machine and learn some Heroku concepts when deploying our backend application. Next, we'll prepare our Angular application for production by introducing some environment variables to manage the hard-coded backend URLs and change the startup scripts in the package.json file. And finally, we're going to wrap up this video by deploying the Angular application to Heroku Cloud Platform. So I opened the source code for the Spring Boot application in IntelliJ IDE. If you want to download the source code, you can check out the links in the description section. So in here, we are going to use PostgreSQL as our production database. We are using this because Heroku provides nice out-of-the-box support for PostgreSQL. We can also use MySQL database, but we have to provide the credit card information to Heroku as I don't want to be charged for the usage of this application. I went ahead with the PostgreSQL database. So to handle the MySQL database for local development and PostgreSQL for production environment, you can make use of the concept of profiles in Spring Boot. Using the Spring Boot profiles, you can provide different set of configuration properties for each profile. In our case, for production usage, we're going to use PostgreSQL and for local development, we're going to use MySQL. So I'm going to create two property files inside source main resources folder, application local dot properties and application prod dot properties. This will give us access to two profiles, local and prod. I'm going to cut and paste the database related properties from the application dot properties file and paste it into application local dot properties. And I'm going to do the same thing also inside the application prod dot properties file. As we have to use PostgreSQL database for this profile, I'm going to rename the driver class name to org dot PostgreSQL dot driver class and change the hibernate dialect to PostgreSQL dialect. Now the next thing we have to do is add the PostgreSQL Java driver to our project. For that, I'm going to add the PostgreSQL Maven dependency to our pom.xml file. After adding this dependency, Spring Boot will auto-configure the PostgreSQL driver class into our project. In the application prod.properties file, we have the data source URL, username, and password properties. Ideally, in the production grade application, we are not going to store the database related information inside the source code and take the risk of exposing it to the public. For that reason, I'm going to delete the URL, username and password properties and we're going to inject them dynamically at runtime using Heroku. Another point to keep in mind is we have a table called as user in our application and having this table name will create a conflict with PostgreSQL database because the keyword user is reserved for internal table in PostgreSQL database. For that reason, I'm going to change the table name by adding an annotation call as table to our user class and I'm going to name the table as reddit underscore users. Now the next step is to replace the hard-coded localhost URL with environment variables. In our reddit clone application, we hard-coded the account activation URLs into the auth service class. So let's try to pull them out into properties file. I'm going to create a property called app.url inside the application local.properties and as well as application prod.properties file. In the local profile, I'm going to set the value for this property as HTTP localhost 8080. And for the prod profile, I can set the value only after creating our application in Heroku. So here we have a close dependency with the app URL. If for any reason we want to change the URL of our backend application, we have to also change the source code which does not seem like a good idea. So we're going to inject this property dynamically at runtime. In this way, if the URL changes in the future, all we have to do is change the property in Heroku and restart the application. We will discuss this topic in a bit more detail in the next section. So to access this property inside our class, we can make use of the value annotation provided by Spring. This looks like a good idea for a single property, 
But if you are working on a bigger project, you will naturally deal with lots of properties and as the project is getting bigger, you will have to keep track of the properties definitions in different places. So for this reason, a better alternative is to declare them inside the configuration class which uses the configuration properties annotation from Spring Boot. Using this class, we can centralize all the logic to define the properties which are injected into different classes. Now it's time to deploy our Spring Boot application to Heroku. The first thing you have to do is to create an account in the Heroku website by visiting the URL you see highlighted in the screen. You can also find this link in the description section. Once you have an account, you can download the Heroku CLI onto your machine by clicking on the download and install section and choosing the installation process based on your operating system. After you install the Heroku CLI on your machine, open a terminal and type the command Heroku help. And if you see the same output like you see on the screen, then the CLI is installed correctly on your machine. As we are going to manage our applications in Heroku using the Heroku CLI, you have to log into our account using the command Heroku login i and enter your credentials. This is not the only way to manage your applications, but uh, we can also use the web portal to create and manage the application deployments. But a CLI is always a handy tool to get things done quickly, so we'll be using the CLI in our tutorial. Once you are successfully logged in, the next step is to create an application in Heroku. You can do that by typing the command Heroku create. And after pressing enter, you can see that our application is created successfully and it is reachable through a very strange looking URL which contains the auto-generated app name. Now let's go ahead and rename the app name to something we like. We can rename the app using the command Heroku apps rename app and let's provide the old app name followed by a space and the new app name and press enter. So you can see that the app is now renamed and our application is reachable at this address. If you try to open this URL in the browser, you can see a Heroku welcome page. Heroku also maintains our code in a Git repository. So you can see that we have a Git repository URL here. Once we commit and push our changes to our code base, Heroku will start deploying the application automatically. So let's see how it looks like as this project is already a Git repository. I'm going to define a new remote URL for this project using the command git remote add Heroku. Now let's add and commit our changes to the repository. And if I push my changes to master branch in Heroku, it automatically detects that I am deploying a Java web application and it starts to run maven clean install command which builds our application. Now once the build is completed and the application is deployed, let's open the web dashboard to see the activity of our application. So in here you can see that I pushed the application to the Heroku instance. So in here you can see the activity that I pushed my application to the Heroku instance. And the interesting thing here is that Heroku automatically provisioned a PostgreSQL database and attached it to the Spring Boot application. And you can see that it is setting the database related properties. So the credentials are also automatically injected into our application. And finally, you can see that the application is deployed successfully. You can check the logs of the application by going back to the terminal and typing the command heroku logs minus t. You will probably be greeted with an exception inside the logs called SQL future not supported exception. This exception occurs due to the Hibernate issue in Spring Boot version 2.2. We can fix this issue by adding a property spring.jpa.properties hibernate jdbc log non-contextual creation equals to true. And also I changed the Hibernate dialect for PostgreSQL from PostgreSQL dialect to PostgreSQL 9.5 dialect to match the latest version of the PostgreSQL database. As the problem is only with the PostgreSQL database, you can add this property only to the application prod.properties file and uh, there is no need to change the other property files. So I'm going to commit and push these changes to Heroku and the next deployment should be started automatically. Now if I type Heroku logs command, I can see that the exception is still there even though we deployed the latest changes to Heroku. This is because the Spring Boot application is not started using the prod profile. You cannot see the logs using the Heroku logs minus T command anymore because it's filled with the exceptions track trace. But uh, you can check more logs using the command Heroku logs n 1500 to show the last 1500 lines of the logs and if you scroll to the top you can find the section where our spring boot application is starting up 
and you can see the message no active profile set falling back to default profile. So that means uh, it is not able to find the prod profile that's why it's fall back to the default profile. So you can activate the prod profile when running the application by providing an environment variable called spring.profiles.active and you can provide the profile name as the value for this variable. You can inject this environment variable through heroku config command by typing heroku config set followed by the variable name. So the naming convention for the environment variable is we have to capitalize all the letters inside the variable and replace the occurrence of a period with underscore. So for the spring.profiles.active environment variable, I can declare it as spring underscore profiles underscore active. And the value for this variable I'm going to provide as prod. We can also use environment variables to store sensitive information like username and passwords. In our example, we have the SMTP server details hard coded inside the application.properties file. So let's remove them from that file and add them as environment variables. After setting this environment variables, our application will be restarted automatically. And now let's check the Heroku logs again. And this time, you should not see any errors inside the log messages. Perfect. Now let's open the application URL and you should see a white label error page, which is from our Spring Boot application, which means it's deployed successfully. Let's also try to make an API call to our application. I'm going to open the Postman client and make a post call to register a sample user in our application. And as you can see, we received the message user registration successful. That means the backend API is working correctly. Now, if you check the activation email sent out to MailTrap SMTP server, we have a value called as null. We have a null value in the place of the host. This is because we did not set the environment variable for the app URL. Let's do this quickly. Inside the terminal, I'm going to type the command heroku config set app underscore URL and I'm going to provide the value of uh, and I'm going to provide the URL of our backend application without the trailing slash as the value. Now if you try to register the user again, you should see the activation email with correct host name. And if I open this URL in the browser, you should see the message account activation successful. Now it's time to prepare the Angular application for production. We're going to mainly concentrate on the building the Angular application for production using the ng build prod command. And we'll also install the HTTP server to run our application on Heroku. Inside the package.json file for the Angular application source code, I'm going to add a step inside the script section called as Heroku post build, where I'm going to give the value ng build prod and followed by the npm install command for, for the dependency HTTP server SPA. After this step, we can start our application by using the HTTP server SPA library by pointing to the distribution folder, which is generated at the time of building the Angular application. The next thing we're going to do is to replace the hard coded URLs with the backend URL, which hosted, which is hosted in Heroku. In Angular, we can manage the environment variables using the environment.ts and environment.prod.ts files. Here, I'm going to declare a property called base URL, which is going to be localhost 8080 inside the environment.ts file. And inside the environment.prod.ts file, I'm going to provide the base URL as spring ready clone tutorial .com. After declaring this base URL, we have to inject this field into the services where we are using the hard coded URL. One of the service is post service TypeScript file. So I'm going to replace the HTTP localhost 8080 with this .base URL property. Let's declare the base URL property by assigning it to the value environment.base URL and the environment property we are importing it from environments folder in our project. I will do the same thing also in the other services you can see on the screen. So after changing the hardcoded URL in all the places, we are ready to deploy our Angular application to Heroku. I'm going to follow the same steps as we did for the Spring Boot application. First, I'm going to create a Heroku application by typing Heroku create. Let's rename this application and then define the remote get URL for Heroku. Now let's commit the local changes and push them to Heroku. This should start the build and deployment process for the Angular application. After the application is built and deployed, it can be accessed at this URL you see on screen. If you click on the URL, you should see the homepage of the Reddit clone application. Now let's try to register a user to see whether the Angular application is able to communicate with the Spring Boot application or not. So you can see that we got a response that the user registration is successful. So we deployed the Spring Boot and Angular application successfully to Heroku. 
I hope you learned something from this video. If you like these kinds of tutorials, please consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding.